Welcome back. This is the second and final video of the two-part data logging series. Now that we have created data sampling objects, it's time to display the data we are collecting. Before I get started, I want to make one little footnote. Um, first of all, I want to change this to LB10 because we used um, LB1 somewhere else in our project, if you remember from the first video. Now, um, I did want to also mention that um, that this is a, if you remember from the first video, this is a trigger-based backup object. The trigger-based object uh, needs to be on the current screen for it to occur. Uh, if you want it to occur no matter which screen is visible at the time, you need to go ahead and use a uh, global backup object. And you'll find that it's pretty much the same um, as, the, uh, as the other one. Okay, all that being said, let's move on to the fun stuff. In this project, I have uh, created some timers to uh, propagate data for us to log. I've got four timers here. I've got two 16-bit timers right here, and we're writing to our registers that we're, that we're logging from. And then I've got uh, two 32-bit timers, so I can show you the differences and the nuances and some challenges when you're logging two different types of data uh, during one sample taking. So um, I've also uh, added a couple of data display objects. Uh, these are these are actual trend displays, and then uh, we've also got a history display, which which I will uh, go over also. Now, if you remember in uh, video one, we added a uh, pause bit uh, to our data sample. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put an object here to handle that. I believe it was LB100. And uh, every state. So we've got our pause bit so we can pause our data sampling. Now, uh, as I said, I've created uh, two display objects here. So we'll look at this one. So um, we're uh, taking samples from our. Uh, from our test sample uh, data collection object or data sample object and uh, we only have one in this project but if we had more they would all be listed here. Um, we are going to define the uh, x-axis range in this case by time 14,400 seconds which uh, equals out to four hours uh, we could add a watch line. What this does is this defines a register that will display the data um, wherever we uh, are, are wherever we click within the project. So I'm gonna uh, we're gonna start with uh, register 20. And uh, since we've got um, two 16-bit and two 32-bit um, objects uh, or data samples in here you'll see that this that these watch line registers uh, are, are all used so that means that uh, LW20 will be the watch line value for our first sample LW21 will be the watch line uh, value for our second sample uh, LW22 will be the starting register for our watch line for our first 32-bit sample and RW24 will be our starting register for our watch line value of our second 32-bit sample. So uh, let me go ahead and throw a couple, uh, couple of um, objects up here to display those. And uh, this is going to be 16-bit. I don't worry about any decimal points or anything. Copy and paste that. Make that 21. 
copy and paste that make it 22 32 bit and uh, this will be our watch line for our second one uh, which would be 24 all right all right so um anywhere I click on this uh, chart right here the uh, the actual value will display in the corresponding um, in the corresponding object with the uh, for for the the exact sample I'm looking at. So uh, let me line this stuff up here a little bit, and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, run a simulation. Go back to our project tab. So um, we are uh, logging data right now and go ahead and turn these timers on and make some new data. So as you can see anywhere I click on the trend this is our watch line and this is the values for the different samples. Of course I could color code these objects to match uh, our lines if, if I wanted in our project but uh, rather than the operator having to rely on these lines and get a real good idea of where it was uh, they can just go ahead and click wherever on the chart and they'll get an exact reading of uh, where it is at that time so that's your watch line Um, you can also uh, define a distance between samples. Uh, you can go as little as uh, one millimeter between samples. So we'll take a look at what that looks like. So it's uh, each sample is uh, the same distance and it's in millimeters. Uh, by contrast, if I went to 10, you'll see a notable difference in, uh, in the distance on each sample. Um, in this example up here uh, I'm doing distance and under the trend tab is where you define your grid and your colors uh, your date and time format uh, that you want it to display in uh, your text color uh, as I said your grid color you can do uh, transparent and um, not have any background or anything at all. Uh, over here under our channel tabs uh, we define uh, we can define which channels are visible and which are not. Uh, we can define our limits. Now um, one thing uh, we run into here if um, the if you've got a different uh, a, a, a sample that's formatted differently or two samples that are formatted differently uh, in the same trend then they need to either have use static limits or the actual uh, limits need to come from 
a register if you're using dynamic limits they need to come from a register where the limits are are entered in at the same in the same data data format as your display so if we uh, if we do static limits here then automatically these limits are going to be formatted to a 32-bit format um, if we did if we did dynamic limits and read this from the same register uh, the formatting would be all screwed up because it's looking for a if, if you enter enter in the object or if the or if the value is produced by the PLC in a 16-bit format it'll come out all screwy on the 32-bit sample so um, in this case I've elected to use uh, static limits for my 32-bit samples and I'm using uh, dynamic limits for the 16-bit samples which by the way incidentally is the same register for the um, preset time for all my timers by the way so uh, yeah like I said you can check whether or not the sample is displayed you may choose to have one data sampling object and only display your 16-bit values in this particular um, display object or you may choose to display them all uh, on the Y scale tab if you are have the grid enabled you can come over to the Y scale tab and you can pick one of the uh, one of the uh, channels as the main axis and uh, another channel for the secondary axis or the auxiliary axis so yeah, what that basically is is a, is a scale here um, that displays the the actual uh, the actual uh, limits and and will define uh, this this uh, these uh, these scale lines within the within the chart. Uh, for this case, I think I'm just going to uh, display the main axis on here and of course the uh, security shape and uh, profile tabs are the same as as what you're used to so uh, I'll go ahead and uh, run a simulation here turn on our timers to make some data zoom in to show everything so um, you can see that we're pretty much working within our uh, our limits here now I can dynamically change our limits on our 16-bit data right here and you'll see that the trajectory changed um, dramatically on our uh, on our trend here pretty cool stuff now of course our 32-bit uh, timers stayed uh, stayed static so now you may remember we put a, uh, a pause uh, bit in here to pause our data sampling so uh, you see I click it and it stops there now um, uh, this is the CMT uh, platform and uh, we've got some some um, options available we could show some previous uh, data data logs that are in the file uh, either from back in history or the or the current one uh, 
up until the next backup. Uh, you can turn off and on the Y scale uh, and and also uh, change which the scale is. You can uh, mute out certain channels. You can turn them off. Reset on all these. So I come back down. Now see we're only uh, displaying the channels that aren't muted. Pretty cool stuff turn back on and we don't lose any of the data it's just a visibility option is all that is pretty neat Cheeto so uh, let's move on uh, there is a another uh, display object this is the historical display object and um, a lot of the same fields you pick which uh, sample you want to show uh, the style you can do a default the crystal or the flat uh, you can pick the style color uh, of course here is your uh, your time format your date format you can choose whether or not to display the time and date and or the sequence number uh, you can change the color of each field if you like under the data format tab uh, <clears throat> it's kind of like the channel tab on the on the other object uh, here you can display you can uh, choose the channels to display and the uh, numeric format if you want to uh, imply a uh, decimal point uh, you've got the title tab you can actually uh, name the channels if you like and you can name any channel you want pretty much anything you want and uh, you'll notice it displays kind of like a uh, like a spreadsheet type uh, looking deal spread it out enough so you can see everything so uh, we'll go ahead and run a simulation so you can see what that looks like One thing I like about this is the uh, the ability to um, put the decimal point in your uh, in your data here. Um, you can uh, on your watch line you could format your your objects to have the decimal point if you wanted, uh, but it will not. The decimal point won't display in your scale on the side here. Well, that about does it. Um, now you know everything you need to know to uh, create some data logging objects and display and store them. Be sure to come back and watch more of our short videos.